10 years from now, where will college football be? As ESPN sort of stuck with that theme earlier this week on a lot of articles, where will college football be in 10 years as you look in that crystal ball? Man, there's a part of me, Ryan, that's really scared and it's terrified, and I will always stand by uh, my argument that college football players do not need, nor, more importantly, nor deserve to be paid. Um, I think there is a gigantic difference between deserve and desire, and college football players, uh, their brains are very scrambled in the middle of that. Uh, They obviously believe that they deserve a lot of different things, but believe that they desire even more things. And the unfortunate part of it is that a lot of folks in the media are driving and pushing that message, and I just disagree with it. I think if, if you've had a chance to live it and you don't have sour grapes and you didn't for some reason as a graduate student that didn't make it in the NFL go out and take out a bunch of student loans or didn't feel like getting a job or didn't work hard at your job and all of a sudden you're just mad because you didn't make it in college football and feel like, hey, I want my money back. Where was my money that I should have made? When you understood that the platform that you are provided is a big-time college football player, is worth more than 99% of the jobs that all college graduates, be it baseball players, gymnastics, regular students, frat boys, journalism students, it doesn't matter. That platform gives you the capabilities to go make an endless amount of money. That platform provided Tom Brady to get a $100 million contract. That platform provided me to be in medical sales and be able to make enough money to kind of have a comfortable start to go out and pursue a media career, which is what I wanted to do. I have friends that sell boxes that make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Some guys are doctors and physicians. You're not able to do that without that platform. I, every job that I've gotten has been because somehow, some way, it was tied back to the fact that I played football at Auburn and in the SEC. Whether they knew my name and even gave me an interview when I probably didn't deserve it, or whether or not it got me in front of, some, in front of someone who was hiring that never would have spoken to me before, or just a guy that I knew that knew about a job opening and pushed me towards it, and the reason that he knew me was because he wanted to talk about Auburn football. This, this, is, this is for all college athletes, and I'm scared that we're going to continue going down this road of unions and employment, and then you have to look at it. taxing guys, guys getting fired. I mean, think about it. If you're an employee, you can be fired. There's no two ways around that. I mean, in Alabama, it's, we're an at-will work state. So Gus Malzahn and Nick Saban, if these kids are employed, they can fire them for getting arrested for pot. They can fire them for missing a block. It, it's all real, and it all can happen. So... I guess I don't really know the answer, but what I hope is we don't continue strongly pursuing this somewhat of a faux American dream that college football players deserve to be employees and make these gigantic salaries when most of them are making twenty and thirty thousand dollars a year anyway, because now the stipends that they get and the Pell Grants that a lot of them are on anyway.